So it's Romeo Manzanilla, and if you serve on the board, you will learn how to say Romeo Manzanilla. <laughs> <laughs> True story. Yes, Romeo Manzanilla. True yes. story. You've been with Realty Austin how long now? 11 years. And just this year, 90% of the company finally figured out how to say his name. <laughs> That's right. Uh, well, it's one of those things that's funny because yeah, I grew up as Romeo, Romeo. And then I would always introduce myself as Romeo. And people would say Romero, Romel. I mean, they'd come up with like, you know, Ramon. And you'd be like, I'd be like, okay, it's, it's I, I, yeah, they come up with these weird variations. So I was like, it's Romeo, like Romeo and Julia, but it's Romeo. But so it's Romeo, right? That was the easy way. But this year, you know, I thought, you know, I actually started last year. I'm like, you know what? I'm going to, Get my name back. I'm gonna get you know, people to pronounce it, pronounce it correctly, right? I'm, I'm tired of like the manchacks and the uh, and, and the water loops and you know it's like let's let's actually enunciate and pronounce you know names correctly. But anyways, but I am so I am the president elect um, this year, so automatically we'll roll into the president position um, next year. Um, it's funny, you know, we talk about the 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 board process, the election process, and I went through that old school process. Um, you know, where it was, you'd interview and you'd get selected and then you'd put, be put on that slate to automatically be put on the board. Um, I will say that my first time interviewing for a board position, I didn't get it. So I did not get it. So I, um, and I had been involved with different committees and things like that. And a lot of times too, obviously, how you handle rejection is really a, a huge indication of your character. So a lot of people, you know, you get rejected that first time. I mean, you kind of, you know, shy away and say, forget this. I don't want to do this. They're not playing fair. And I, you know, I took it as a more of a challenge and say, you know, what, what is it that I could do to gain more knowledge about the industry, gain more knowledge about the association? So when I do apply again, then I feel much more comfortable in that interview and also just feel more confident about my knowledge of the association and my passion for wanting to serve on the board. So, you know, I applaud you, applaud everybody here for showing interest and also just know if, you know, if you don't get it that first time, it doesn't mean that you aren't qualified to serve. It's just, you know, maybe it's just not the, the right time. So I wanted to put that out there. Um, I'm supposed to talk about, you know, the, the time commitment. I know Ashley talked a little bit about, uh, about that, kind of a typical day, but I will say, when you serve on the board, and not just in an officer position as president-elect or president or secretary-treasurer, I mean, you are a representative of the association. So when you go to events, I mean, you are there representing the association. So you should make it a, a objective to talk to people and find out what is on people's mind as well. Because again, you serve the association in a in the board capacity. So it's, as far as like the time commitment, I mean, all of it really is how much time do you want to put into it? How much time you know, is, is enough for you in terms of fulfilling that role? So there's, you know, there's board members that will go to absolutely every single event, right? And, and that's great. They've got the capacity and the time to be able to do that. Other board members will, of course, um, go to a couple, you know, a couple events, you know, um, every month or every other month, um, and of course, you know, they show up, but they show up ready to serve on that board meeting. And that's really what's key is that you will get this board packet, and sometimes I think our last one was 180 pages long. It was very, very long. So, yeah, we broke. Yeah, so so you get this board packet uh, the Friday before the Wednesday board meeting, and it is like. Just you know everything about the association. <clears throat> you, you know, you are expected to you know represent the association to the best of your ability. So it it takes some preparation. It's not something like you're going to cram for a test. You know, five minutes before you step in to take the test. I mean, you know, really you're being counted on to make these decisions for the entire association. So and these decisions are not just policy, but they're financial decisions as well that affect, you know, the, the, org the organization. So, you know, really the, the time that is required as far as uh, being a board member is, is studying your board packet, your agenda packet, and not just studying that, but asking questions. And I know it was asked before, do you need a lot of, a lot of uh, committee time or um, prior experience on committees? I mean, that does help because it puts you in a structured meeting with uh, Rob's, uh, with the rules of order um, and knowing how to 
pose questions, how to you know, ask the right questions, and so forth. But it's definitely not a requirement because that agenda packet is so complete that really it gives you a really good background on everything. But if there's things that it doesn't address and you still have questions about you know, certain things that are being proposed, then by all means, I mean, we want, you know, we want our board members to be interactive and we want our board members to be collaborative with each other and with, the, with other members of you know, the association. Because again, this is your association, you're, you're <laughs> serving in that capacity to serve the entire association. So I think you know, from a, it, it's hard to put a number as far as like, you know, you're, gonna, you're gonna be busy for 20 hours a month because realistically it's as much capacity as you have is you know really your time commitment, right? So if you can, you know, if you can go and represent ABOR at an event, um, and sometimes you know you'll find that if you're the only uh, ABOR board member and it's a it's an event, they may ask you to say something too about the association. The good thing is that when you serve on the board, you go through uh, spokesperson training as well with our with our PR company. So you get you know you get taught how to be put on the spot and how to you know, promote the association, how to answer, and also, if you don't know the answer, you know, not to wing it, right? Because you don't want to misstate, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so, because <laughs> you don't want to misrepresent the facts, right? Because it's one of those things that, especially if it's being recorded, um, that it's gonna live, you know, forever. But, again, you know, from a time commitment, it's really as much time as you're able to devote to that position above and beyond being ready for the meetings. Um, and in the meeting, you know, we expect and we want all the board members to be outspoken because that's, you know, that's where the diversity comes into, into play. Everybody has a different perspective, a different uh, background, a different upbringing, different beliefs. But ultimately, when you're serving in that board position, everybody's wearing the same hat, a board member, and doing, making decisions that are best for the entire association. But it doesn't mean that you, know, you can't disagree with somebody, because again, we want that, um, that constructive debate in the boardroom, because we want to be able to consider things from all different angles and different aspects and so forth. But ultimately, when the board decides and makes a decision, even if it didn't go in your favor or what you thought the direction should have been, you, know, you have to have that unity and that one voice because otherwise you undermine the decisions of, of the board if, you, if you're vocal about trying to say, oh, I, you know, I don't like this or I didn't vote this way. Because again, you have your opportunity during the board discussions to be able to, uh, you know, to voice your objection or voice your opinion. But in the end, it's the majority and it's the majority of their rules. And once that decision is made, then even if it didn't go in your favor, then you know, no sour grapes. You just you know move forward with it, and you you know and you help uh, promote because everything that we do mm. is all on the route of that strategic plan. So every decision that we you know that we follow and we make is on route to that strategic plan. So you know when you come into the the boardroom, it, there's no personal agendas. Sometimes there's you know sometimes you know you, you're passionate about something right like for instance like Job is very passionate about education and and we and that's a great perspective in the boardroom because it's it brings up topics and discussions that normally we wouldn't have engaged in so it's great to be passionate about something and present your case and have the discussion and then ultimately as a group you know you decide what's best for the entire association but again that diversity in perspective and views beliefs, I mean, that all comes to, comes to play. Um, you know, just touching again on the board responsibilities, I, you know, I, I came into this role uh, initially as a, as a board member several, several years ago, not for personal gain, not for, you know, free lunches or free travel or anything else like that. You know, for me, it was really, I just wanted to know more about my association and my industry. And that's one of the biggest things that you take away from serving in the board capacity is that you are so much more in the know about what is happening in your industry. You know, most people work day to day. They're thinking about, you know, where's my, where's my next buyer coming from, my next seller. And they, you know, they don't see the big picture. They don't see a lot of the things that are affecting our industry, the disruption, the changing of business models. And it's one of those things if, you know, if you aren't aware of those things and you don't adapt, then you know you're, one day you're going to find yourself and you're going to be irrelevant. You know, so 
serving in this capacity really keeps you connected with what is happening in the industry, and that all filters down into your own business as well. You know, because knowing what is happening with affordable housing from a commercial aspect, I mean, when you're out showing properties, you can speak to a much higher level, you know, in terms of your knowledge with your clients, and you impress upon them, like, wow, you are really in the know of what's going on. So there is that trickle effect, and again, it's getting serving in this role is not for personal gain, it's not for um, personal ego, it's for the betterment of the entire association, but there is that side benefit that you, you know, you go into meetings, you deal with clients, and you have a, another level of confidence and knowing that not only you're professional in, you know, in, from the sales perspective, but you're a professional from an industry perspective as well. So that's my two cents, but yeah, but questions? John. More of an observation on the first point that Romeo mentioned, uh, and I will take some credit with getting Jonathan to say your name right. Uh, I know, yeah, I always give him a hard time too about it. Yeah, that, that love. Uh -huh. uh, the work, I mean, you're, you're required to come in here prepared, but getting prepared shouldn't be so intimidating. And, the, and what I mean by that is uh, packets are big, there's a lot of issues that you're not expected to be an expert on. Mm -hmm. I always think of technology, the two people that I go to first are Ryan Rodenbeck who's the current director, and Jonathan Boatwright is the current director, because both of those two are really, really deeply rooted in technology. And then I bookend that by having a conversation with Stan Martin. Uh, and then I'll go to somebody like Emily who can explain it to me in English. Yes. So there are a whole lot of people that can pick up on issues. You're, you're not supposed to be the expert coming in here. That's so right. don't think of it from that. Don't, it should be intimidating. But you're expected to be prepared and aware. And I think the beauty of coming in here and not being an expert is you can ask great questions as someone who's out there in production, someone who's familiar with what, what other agents are doing in production, other members, and lend that voice to this room. There are Monday hours that, that all, all of the board meetings are the first Wednesday of each month on or about. January is usually bumped out to accommodate for vacations. Uh, but Monday, the staff has hours. So I can go talk to Amy and Jenny about legislative issues or Andre. I can talk to Stan about MLS stuff. I can talk to Singh about foundation. Whatever it is, it may be on the docket. There's an opportunity to come in and visit with somebody and get coached up. Don't, don't think of it as intimidating. Just read the packet, put a list of questions together to get those answered or if they're appropriate for the boardroom. And that's right. There's no quiz. There's no quiz. You're not going to get quiz to see like if what, what did page 79 say about this. Yeah, <laughs> you know. There's no quiz. But like like John was saying, it's really just being informed. And if you have questions about it, then there's the resources to be able to you know to ask those additional questions. You know, a lot of times when the agenda is that lengthy, most of it is reporting to the board of directors. So the agenda that had you know almost 200 pages. We had a priorities report because we wanted the board of directors to know where we are in accomplishing their priorities. Uh, we have a, a, a quarterly operations report. Uh, July, we're going to be having our semi-annual strategic planning report, which is going to give the board of directors the status on where we are on all of these strategies for these visions. Um, so a lot of it is just information. Mm -hmm. And not something you have to make a decision on. That's right. Or yes. minutes from the committee. <laughs> That's right. right? Yes. So you can really see if you're really interested in what the committees are doing. You should be a supporter. You can yeah. read it there. And, and keep in mind the committees are all open. So if you are, you know, find yourself that you're very passionate about uh, budget, you know, you can go to the budget meetings, right? Or you go to LMT, or you can go to different ones. So it, you know, you'll never be as a board member, especially you want to be in the know, especially if you're going to be voting on something that you aren't 100% familiar with. Then talk to that committee chair. You know, talk to the the staff liaison for that committee and so forth. But you you aren't expected to be the expert but you just are expected to be informed enough to be able to make a decision, best decision for the association. One last point, you, you all can see the, the board meeting agendas. Uh, it's uh, available to members, so if you haven't, uh, get a copy of a past one. I'm sure Vicki can make that available to us. They're all on the right. mm -hmm. Then I won't put that on Vicki. Go online and figure out what the June one. We'll see that. That'll be uh, next Friday for folks, right? Personal Friday. Yeah, so you have a chance to look at it and see what it is that we're reviewing prior to that. You won't get the executive session uh, details if there are, is an executive session, but I won't get any of those details once you get the general membership information. Yes. 
but uh, just questions just in general as far as like board responsibilities and uh, like I said, Ashley, you know, gave a really good uh, synopsis kind of a, of a week and, and one of the things that we're, um, we're really trying to work on, you know, before it used to be the president that would address everything, right? he would be like all the interviews and everything else and we're trying to incorporate a lot more of the board members with a lot of our media strategy, which is why everybody goes through spokesperson training. So even if you find like, you know, you feel like you aren't, um, Good looking enough, you know, eloquent enough in speech or whatever. I mean, we will, you know, I don't, I don't know about the good looking enough, but anyways, <laughs> <laughs> maybe some makeup, but uh, but anyways, no, but, but as far as it, the uh, spokesperson training, that will, you know, really train you to feel confident about the issues that you're being asked about and talk because we want, you know, the entire board to be out there and engaged and seen as a resource to the association. I'll just add on to that real quick. Um, all the media requests come through me, and so then I work with our PR team to decide which board member should be asked to do an interview. So if, if we're talking about um, something at City Hall, Ashley is a good one because she's very flicked in there. If it's just sort of the pulse of the community and how, how people's buying cycles are going, we'll go with someone like Jonathan, a uh, John. Um, Romeo gets a lot of just big picture interviews because he's the president-elect and knows what's going on with the association. And so we do, you know, some people specialize in downtown. So if it's an issue that we can pair a mem uh, board member with, then that's what we yes. really try to do. So we try to use your expertise when needed. Yeah. Why did you come back, Romeo? Did you cover that? I mean, you obviously, you finished your term, uh -huh. come back. What, what brought you back? So, so initially, I, like I said, I was, once I got um, selected, I served a three-year term, and I decided to take take time off. So again, I wasn't doing that. I wasn't serving for ego or like you know free lunches. And uh, from a business perspective, within um, within Realty Austin, we were doing a reorganization, and which would put me in the broker in charge position of, of the entire company. So Wayne the responsibility there, and not knowing exactly what that would entail. Um, I didn't want to take on too much. That's honestly why I stepped away. I said, I, I'm not sure how much of my time and how much in, if I can adequately give enough time as a board member to the association. Plus, I also wanted to give somebody else a chance to get in there and serve. Um, during that time, you know, of that transition, I did also uh, go through TRLP, so Texas uh, Real Estate Leadership Program as well. And that's a, that's a program that's run through uh, Texas Realtors. And what it does, it prepares you for a, a leadership position uh, because you go through training <clears throat> on advocacy, you go through training, you go through spokesperson training as well, but you cover all different aspects. And the whole idea behind that program is that it prepares you for a leadership position. So I kind of did it backwards because I was already in a leadership position and I did TRLP, but for me I felt it was also kind of a misstep because you, you develop a, a camaraderie with that group that go through that as well. So I, th that's what I did during, the, um, during that off year. And then when um, the association found itself in a situation, just given, give, you know, given some of the turmoil and some of the changes where um, it was, it was requiring, there's certain requirements to serve as president-elect and president, and there was a, a very finite pool of members that could serve in that capacity. And that's um, in speaking to Vicki, speaking to other board members, and speaking to my wife, you know, because it's extensive travel as president-elect and president, um, you know, speaking to Jonathan and Yvette Boatwright, the owners of Realty Austin, about the possibility of me applying for the president-elect. And, you know, everybody asked me, you know, do you want to do it? You know, and, uh, and thinking back as far as uh, what I had, we had accomplished uh, during my time on the board, I felt like there was so much more, especially given the new direction that the association was taking, the influx of new perspectives. So actually, you know, I was really, really excited about, you know, where things were headed, and that's where I decided to put, you know, throw my hat in the ring and, uh, and interview for the president-elect position. Yeah, did that answer your question? Yes, why did he answer? Uh, <laughs> yeah. So, anyways, any other any other questions? And, and just know, you know, president elect, president, you know, realistically, you're as the president, you're not making the decisions. You're really facilitating the meeting. You're really keeping things in order. Um, you're working on the agenda. It's the body, the entire body, 
that makes the decision. So it's not, you know, being the president is not a position of power, it's not a position of ego or glory, it's really um, being the chief cat herder and making sure that everybody, uh, everybody stays on task. Yes. Uh -huh. So, any other questions? No? Thank you. All right, thank you.